In 2011, the Tohoku earthquake created a tsunami so large that when it struck Japan, it killed approximately 16,000 people, destroyed 130,000 buildings, and caused an estimated $210 billion worth of damage, making it one of the costliest natural disasters in world history. On top of that, when the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant was hit by the tsunami, it began releasing the largest amount of radioactive materials into the environment since the Chernobyl disaster of 1986. Now, almost three years later, there are continuing and serious concerns over the levels of both the initial and ongoing radiation contamination, not only in Japan proper, but also what's leaking into the Pacific Ocean. Now, information regarding this nuclear accident has been very tightly controlled by the Japanese government. So we sent Vikram Gandhi to ground zero of this environmental disaster to see firsthand what's really happening in Fukushima. Oh, that's the Daiichi Plat? More than 160,000 residents were evacuated from the contaminated towns which surround Fukushima. Many of them had little to no idea the full extent of the disaster. We were able to get special access to the exclusion zone by tagging along with the Yamada family as they visited the home they abandoned three years ago. The Japanese government has declared most of these ghost towns unlivable. But what is more disturbing is what they are not telling us. In the days following the tsunami, a series of explosions ripped through three of the Fukushima reactors. Despite global concern of a potential nuclear catastrophe, the Japanese government downplayed the severity of the situation. As a member of the Japanese House of Representatives at the time of the disaster, Hiroshi Kawachi witnessed firsthand the inadequacy of the government response. Do you think the government is lying about the extent to which the damage has been created by this accident? この Wondering how radiation levels 168 times worse than Hiroshima could ever be perceived as okay, we decided to investigate further. In this school, there's an NGO that's going around testing people for thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is one of those diseases that's caused by radiation. Inside, we met with Dr. Masamichi Nishio, who is in the midst of testing local children. <laughs> Have you been told that there should be warnings because you're going to have a child? The monitoring posts that he's referring to are government-funded Geiger counters, but the problem is that many locals believe that the government has only cleaned up in the area immediately around them. Mrs. Kayoko Hashimoto has made it her personal mission to uncover the truth. The whole concept of these stationary Geiger counters becomes suspect when only a few feet away, the readings are twice as high. And when you move even further away, those government monitors start feeling completely irrelevant. Over here, by the edge of the school, 
We're gonna leave it there for a second. Oh, shit. So the reading is now 3.5. That level is 20 times higher than the monitoring post around the corner, on a playground at an elementary school. But why does this all matter? To get a better understanding of the long-term effects of radioactive contamination in our global ecosystem, we went to Okinawa to meet Dr. Joji Otaki, a researcher at the University of Ryokus, who has focused his research on an unlikely subject. The lifespan of butterflies is only about one month, so the effects of radiation in contaminated food over the course of multiple generations can be studied in a short span of time. We collected host plant leaves from Fukushima. And uh, those leaves are given to larvae uh, collected from Okinawa. So those larvae are uh, supposed to be healthy, but uh, they ate contaminated food from Fukushima. Then we see what happens. What happened? They died. Dr. Otaki's experiments have showed the truly horrifying effects contaminated food can have on living organisms. So this is a normal butterfly that has eaten healthy food. That's right. So you can see a very beautiful color patterns and uh, flat wings. Next up was a butterfly that ate contaminated food at the larvae stage. Immediately you can see the wrinkled wings. Doesn't really even look like a butterfly anymore. No. And we found that the mortality rate and abnormality rate of the second generation is much higher. And then the third generation? Even worse in the third generation. The evidence that contaminated food has increasingly worse effects over the course of generations is especially scary since one of Fukushima's primary industries is agriculture. 49 miles from the Fukushima plant is the farm of Kazoya Tarakawa, tended by his family for eight generations. In the days after the tsunami, the government allowed them to continue to sell their produce as usual. The current state-mandated limit for radiation in produce is 100 becquerels per kilogram. ベクレルぐらいあるっていうのも何もわからないで私たちはそこで生産してた。それがね、自分では数字はあの分かってて店に売るっていうのがすごくこう犯罪を犯してるような私はどの数字だったら食べても安全かっていうのは未見質のもだ
the tanks themselves are leaking. 300 tons worth of radioactive water leaked right into the ground, even after weeks of denying that any such leak had taken place. Who knows how much of it is washing into the ocean. We went to TEPCO's headquarters to try and get a direct answer on their lack of transparency, but they wouldn't even let us in the building. The head of PR met us on the front steps, flanked by handlers. It took TEPCO two years to admit that 300 tons of contaminated water were going into the Pacific Ocean. So why would people in the international community or Japan believe TEPCO now? Sorry, but it's really out of time, so... Oh. TEPCO's representatives wouldn't talk to us, but we were able to track down one of their employees, who, as long as his image was concealed, was willing to tell us what he believes is the real extent of the damage. Is TEPCO trying to cover up how bad the water leakage is? Yes, yes. Yes. そういったものが無数にあります。事故から3年近く経ちますが、その中で最初の頃にポンプであったり、ホースであったり、そして建屋そのもの、そういったものが次々と壊れ始めています。それはだんだん悪くなっています。それぐらいの大きなトラブル、